Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Anyway, I'm excited to be here with you all. I hope you're all having an absolutely great week. And it's uh, it's just good to be here. Good to share this with you. Good to do a, a really great coaching session. So let's have a really good one today, hey? Let's have a really, really, really good one. I want to dive straight in. Is it okay to go straight into this? Nice. All right, let's, yeah, yeah, cool. Let's just jump straight in and talk a little bit about structure, okay? This is a, a word I think that is new to a lot of, a lot of you guys uh, in the way that we use it, okay? So, so when I use the word structure, okay, a structure, a structure is something that has many different parts, okay? that are held together, that work together. Okay, so that's a structure. So a structure is something that has many different parts that are working together. So for example, a skyscraping, skyscraper building is a structure. Uh, a human body is a structure. Lots of different parts held together in a certain way. Now, now, does that make sense? Now, how are they held together? They're held together by tension, okay? So if I increase the tension here, the structure of my arm moves this way. If I increase the tension here, it moves back that way. So, so tension uh, moves a structure, okay? And the structure is moved to release or resolve that tension. So, you know, a, a, a river has a certain structure and when gravity, the principle of gravity is uh, on it and if there's a slope, that structure has a tension in it and the water resolves the tension by flowing down, okay? So does that make sense? One of the easiest structures uh, that we all, um, we all know is I'm hungry, okay? And the, we, we know that there's a, there's a tension in our body when we're hungry. And so the structure is we want to resolve that hunger, okay? So, so what we want is we wanna go from hungry to, to be satisfied, okay? And the way that we do that is typically we eat, okay? And so eating is the obvious action that goes from hungry to satisfied. Does this make sense? Does everyone start to understand how that tension created a uh, resolution? Cool. So, do, does it mean satisfied is better than hungry or hungry is better than satisfied? No, that they're, they're just different states of the same person. It's the same, it's the same thing. And so the, the tension creates resolution. Now, they're, they're just different states, right? They're not better. They're just different. They're just different. So what can happen sometimes is you can create a, a, a structural conflict and a lot of us have this. So let me show you uh, at the same time how we can have competing structures, okay? So let's say at the same time you are, and I'll put this around it, you're overweight. And so at the same time you're hungry in the same current reality, you're also overweight. This can create a, a, a competing structure. So in, instead, overweight, uh, what you want to do is, is you want to, the end result of being overweight, if, you, if that's your, where your tension is, it's to, to lose weight. And the obvious action of this is do the opposite of, of eat, which is diet or restrict your calories. Now, who can see the really strange uh, dynamic that's at play in this structure. Yeah, who can see the conflict here? They're both hungry and have more weight on their body than they would desire, you see? there, And so there is two competing structures and two competing tensions. Does this make sense? So some days this one wins and other days this one wins. 
And so I want you to imagine the, the person that's stuck in the middle here, okay? And all they do is they, they go towards eat, which then makes them feel more overweight. And so then they, they move a little bit that way. And then they're pulled back this way, which says diet and hungry. And can you see how this person, it's like they literally are in this loop like this. Type in a yes if you get it. Can you see that? Can you see that structure there? And so this is called, uh, this is when you have conflicting structures. Okay. So when you're in a structure like this, there is simply no way to win. There's simply no way to win. And, and, and here's what, you know, the typical advice would be. It'd be, well, you got to work on yourself. You got to overcome yourself. You got to do, but you have these competing structures. And so you work on yourself, you read books, you do these things. What happens? The diet doesn't work and you end up back in the overweight or it works for a little bit because you force it. You force it enough to hold it. Okay. Only enough. And as you hold it, the tension increases to go the other way, you see? So think about this. As soon as you diet a little bit, the tension or of the overweight tension is reduced. You see, it's not so bad anymore. Does that make sense? And so because it's not so bad, what has more tension? Hungry, you see? So another way to think about this is that, uh, I'll see if I can change color. You're in the middle here and you have a rubber band that's around, okay? So the, the eat and the overweight, you have a rubber band that is around this end result here and this end result here, okay? So what happens is, as soon as you move a little bit towards the overweight, you move a little bit this way. What happens? If I move a little, think about these two rubber bands. If I move a little bit towards the eating and the overweight, then there's the tension, okay, to then want to diet. So then I diet a bit. So I move back this way. And I'm not so overweight, now I'm hungry. The tension seeks resolution in the opposite. And a person simply lives in this forward and back, forward and back, forward and back uh, situation. True. So the, 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 the problem with this structure is at, at some point, the person goes, well, it's me. They say, I'm the common denominator, right? And they go, well, I'm the one that's been doing all the diets. I'm the one that put the food in the mouth. It's me. You see? They say, it's me. It's me. I'm the one. I'm the one going back and forth. They get fed up. And by the way, this is the same as being in a relationship. So you can have, um, you know, uh, uh, be in a relationship uh, and feel love or, or be, be single and not feel. But then as soon as you move this way, see, so you could have a competing structure, guys. So check this one out. On this side here, you have, um, uh, you have a feeling of lonely, lonely, and you also have a desire to be uh, independent. Then over here, you have a feeling of being in love, okay? But at the same time, you might lose that independence, right? So you, you're love and you're in a relationship. And you see the competing tension structures there. 
Yeah. Yes. Can everyone see that? So, so that's another example of this, right? Same with people who who want to have a business or have a have a job. I, and I and I see this everywhere. So what happens is is we we get this idea where we think it's us. So we make this 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 idea and we say it's me, right? It's me. I'm going to work on me because I'm the one always there. But if we actually go up into a second level, and this is what we're going to cover today. So this is just a quick intro. Most of you have heard this before. When we go up again, what's the real common denominator? It's the structure. All right. And the structure is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And that the structure is that we try to resolve something by going into a different direction. Does that make sense? We try to resolve it. And I want to help you so that you don't have to have this forward and back and forward and back and forward and back. And, and it's, it's constant. It's constant. You see it in our societies. You see it everywhere. We're in this structure. And so the, the general premise that someone would say, okay, is they see water flowing in one direction, right, in a structure, that say, hey, water, you don't want it enough. You know, hey, water, you don't want it enough. Hey, water, work on yourself. Hey, water, you got to be more positive. Hey, water, you got to be, and the water's going, I simply just can't go right because the structure won't let me go there. I can't flow back up the hill. The structure won't let me flow back up. Does that make sense? This structure, what with comp competing um, tension structures, won't let it happen. You see, it won't let it happen. So one of the biggest structures that I see, okay, is the identity, the identity and ideal, okay? So let me ask, uh, let me ask a lot of you, what is kind of your ideal life? See, a lot of us have this ideal, right? We have an ideal, we have a life that that we, we really, really want. And let, let's say that that life is uh, the ideal, it's uh, love, it's, uh, you know, abundance, it's health. It's impact, status, stuff like that. Okay, we have this ideal. And yours could be one of these. You have your own one. This is just an example. Okay. But then we have this identity. Okay. And then this, this identity of who we actually are. So this is the ideal on this side. And then here's, here's the identity. Not worthy, not enough, uh, not capable, uh, insignificant, uh, not perfect, uh, don't belong fits in here as well somewhere, okay? And we don't we don't want to say that we think these things about ourselves. Okay, we don't. We you know we don't. We don't walk around saying, "Oh, I feel not worthy." Like we don't. But our, our actions prove that that uh, we're not we're not good enough, or we're not worthy. We're not this. And and in fact, society really helps us to define an ideal. Okay, to define an ideal to resolve ways we feel incomplete. Okay ways that we feel incomplete just think about that we've we've been told to design an ideal life but the way we've been told to design the ideal life was actually to resolve things about ourselves resolve ways we feel incomplete if you have love well then that proves that you're worthy you see if you have abundance it proves that you're good enough you know, if you have amazing health, it proves you know you're perfect. 
you see? So what we do is we've set up this tension structure to go and go this way towards having static. These are just examples, yes. But there is a competing structure. And that is, as soon as you move towards this way, the unwanted identities tension increases. Do you all see that now? As soon as you move towards having it, what pops up? More tension around how you're actually not good enough for this person. You know, we, what do you think? You, you can't be a coach. Who do you think you are? You see? And so the identity pops up to pull it back. This identity ideal structure is then reinforced, okay? How do we move back? We start moving towards something we want and we feel worry. What if it fails? See, what is the what if it fails? Why would anyone be worried about something failing? We all know that failure is the way towards success, yes? You must do something you've not done before and you have to get it wrong. Right, we all know that that's true. We've never seen anyone start something, play the play an instrument, learn business, start a new relationship. We've never in history seen someone just nail it first time. True, true. But yet we're worried about failure. Why would we be worried about failure? Why would we be worried about rejection? Why would we be worried about getting it wrong? Why would we be worried? And here's why: we're worried because if that happens. The world might know that one of these is true. The world might know, oh, look, they failed. See, look, look, they're not good enough. You see? So we're so worried about that. So as we move towards what we want, the tension, and you feel it. Oh, I want to be a coach. And you go for it. And then all of a sudden, <gasps> but what if I fail? Right? Where's that coming from? It's coming from the tension that your identity is bringing in saying, you don't, don't let anyone know that you're one of these. You see? So why do people oscillate? Why do they stay here and here? Hey, by the way, who's enjoying today? Are you guys getting this? Any questions? Let me just see if there are any questions. <laughs> yeah, just to you, Heather. Any questions? Everyone's with me on this? Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, cool, great. Okay, because this is, this is very, very important. We've all had this our whole lives. We've all had this our whole lives. We are trying to create things to prove that we're not one of our deepest, darkest fears. I'm going to do this to prove I'm worthy, that I'm, I'm, I'm validated. I'm going to do this to prove that I'm smart enough. I'm going to do this to prove that I'm good enough. I'm going to do this too, you see? I'm going to do this too, uh, so that I'm a winner. And what happens is, is this comes from a very early childhood pattern of, of what it means to be good and good and what it means to be bad. And this is very interesting to think, okay, we're so oriented of not being bad or a, a loser, right? And we would have had this passed down to us first family about what it means to be a winner and what it means to be a loser, right? Like financial ruin, you're a loser. Financial success, you're, you're a winner right? You're single at 30, bad, right? You're in a relationship, even if you hate it and it's abusive, good, right? You're overweight, bad, right? You're, you're in a, a, a slim body, even though you never enjoy your life and you eat food you hate, good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not based on reality, is it? 
It's not based on reality. It's just this, it's the structure we're caught in and it's the identity versus ideal structures and they fight each other because the identity has to be true, but then we're trying to get out of it. And so what we do is at some point we make an assumption that it's all about me and I've got to go fix myself, okay? So typically we move towards something and then we move back to fix ourselves, okay? We come back because we've got to fix, but then we move this way to resolve. What I mean by that is I'm going to resolve one of these. I'm going to make it not true by going and creating one of these. But as I move to resolve it, these things pop up. So then I've got to go fix them. You see, I've got to go resolve it. Oh, I'm not good enough. I've got to go fix it. I've got to wait. I've got to do that. I've got to... Da -da 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 -da. So this is the, the structure that, uh, that most are in. True? And uh, this is a very stressful structure. Very stressful. And this structure is where we've made everything personal. In fact, this structure causes more stress in your body and more health problems than any other thing on the planet. This is stressful. I'm going to go here. Oh, I'm not good enough. I've got to go fix myself. I'm going to go have to see. So I want you to truly get this. What you create is not personal. We must separate us as the creator and our creation. I want you to hear this. You are not your body. You create your body. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's not you. You are not your relationship. You are not your money. You are not your kids. You are not your health. You are not your business. You are not your impact on the world. You are not your book. You are not your friendships. You are not that. You're here. You create those. So what we've done is we've taken ourselves and we've put it in the creation and made it personal. See, there is nothing you can do to be a better or worse human. Think about it. The person who gets the cure for cancer and the person that's cured for cancer, which one's better? Line up a thousand kids. Good enough, not good enough, good enough, worthy, not worthy. It's just not true, is it? There's no way for you to, and we've got this idea that if I do this, all these things, my existence will be more validated. You with me? If I do this and achieve this and have this relationship and this body, and if I have this and I have that, then I'm better. And that bad. And this is, this is the victim to circumstances. This is not the creative structure and magnetic mind tribe. This is the number one challenge that people have in life. They're just chasing trinkets and chasing ideals and chasing relationships and chasing all these things because they believe it's going to validate their life more. It's going to, I'm, a, I'm going to be better if I have all of that. And I wrote a post recently and I said, choosing to have what you love is very different from trying to be a winner. But most in life are trying to win the game of life, you see. Win it. If I have this and I have this, you see. And by winning, it means resolving the ways or proving to the world, proving to the world that they're not any of these, you see. Structure. Structure. Someone says the mindset of my life, the mindset of society, the mindset of society. So we want to get into a different structure. Okay. And that's very important. A different structure, same ingredients. Okay. Just like if you take water and you, you have the exact same ingredients, you change its structure, it can become ice. You do the opposite thing to it, same ingredients, it becomes steam. Does that make sense? It's the same ingredient. It's you. We put you in a different structure. There will be different results. Do you follow that? In fact, think about this. Have you ever seen a structure and you put 
the, a new person in that structure. And because they go in that structure, they behave a certain way. I just finished watching the last dance documentary about the Chicago Bulls. They won three, three in a row. Then Michael Jordan went and played baseball, had like two years off. The team changed around. Then he came back. New people came into the structure and they were able to hit the game winning shots and do the same things that the others did because of the structure. You see, have you ever seen, seen instances like this where you fire an employee and they go, the next person comes in, they're supposed to be the best person and they behave the exact same way because of the structure. You see, if you're walking through a supermarket, you have to walk the same way through it. It doesn't matter how motivated you are, the structure will, 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 will make sure that you always take the path of least resistance. Does that make sense? You simply cannot win in this structure. And, I, and this is the, the reason why the personal development world is broken because they just reinforce this structure. Yeah, go fix yourself so that you can have this end result. They basically say, if you can fix yourself enough, then you can be a winner. True? And what's the invisible instruction behind that? You're not good enough just being you. In fact, you should have massive big goals, then your life will be more meaningful, you know? Start with why. Why not start with what you love? There's only one why, because I love it. That's the only why. Why do you want to have a great family? Love it. Why do you want to have a great body? I love it. Why do you want to have you know, a huge following, millions of dollars, write a book? Because I love it. That's the only, the only valid answer. Any other answer is you, you're, you're trying to resolve one of these ways that you feel incomplete. Just it, the only reason is because I love it. Who agrees with that? See, it, it's, a, it's a big wake-up call for the industry, this work that we're bringing forward. It's a massive wake-up call because they don't realize that they are literally sending an invisible instruction to themselves every single time they try to fix themselves, right? Every time they go and buy and do another thing, you've got to always ask, what is the invisible instruction? And it's honestly, it's a plague in, 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 this, in this work right now. I mean it. I seen a post yesterday from a well-respected guy. And he said, even if you're going slow, you're further ahead than those that haven't started. What a ridiculous thing to post. D literally, what does other people's progress have to do with you at all? And who dictates slow? This guy had like 3,000 shares of this. Well-respected dude. Ridiculous premise. Ridiculous premise. The ideas that are put out, that just doesn't make any sense. There's nothing to, nothing to, you know, how about everyone that says, yeah, you got to work on yourself in this whole lifetime of trying to become perfect. There's whole movements around trying to perfect yourself with some ideal that if you're perfect, then you can have what you desire. And, and they don't say perfect, do they? They say, have these particular beliefs and do this and have this, true? They say all these things, but what's the invisible instruction? You've got to be perfect, you know? But I know people that are super negative and have heaps of money. I know people super positive that heaps of money. I know people super negative, great body, uh, really positive, great body. Right. I know people that eat meat, vegetarian, that there's there's no perfect way. Yet every single every single place would have you believe that. And so here's here's the truth. It's not personal. You're over here and what you create is here. We need to get you into just a new orientation. But just like water shifts to steam or shifts to ice, you're good enough. We're just changing your structure. Does that make sense? You're not actually going to change. We put you into a different structure, just like you take a person and put them in the Chicago Bulls structure, they became a winner. You see that, guys? They became a winner, not in life, in the basketball game, right? That's very different than the winner I wrote up here.
Explain why I don't gel with a positive and negative paradigm. Uh, well, you have to explain what you mean by the positive negative paradigm. I don't know uh, what, par which paradigm, positive, negative. There's a lot unsaid in that statement. Hard to answer. Who's, which paradigm? My paradigm? Other people's paradigm? Okay. So let's talk about shifting into a new structure, shall we? Because there's a different structure that if we get you in it, it resolves in the way you want to go. Okay. And it just moves forward. Like the river just flows to where you want. And it, it all starts. Oh, cool, cool, thanks. Yeah, it does explain you've not felt right with the oscillation of negative and positive, yeah. Well, yeah, cool, I got it. Cool, let me just, uh, I've warmed up now. <laughs> I'm warm, I'm in, I'm in flow. No, no, I got it, you're awesome. Hey guys, uh, type in, what are you guys loving from this so far? Steam is happening, new, new structures happening. Everything. Yeah, good. Got to have the be here now hat on. It's part of it. <laughs> okay. So we're going to move into a new structure. So the, there's, there's four things that we must step into uh, to create a new, new structure. The, the first choice is that uh, we're going to get into end results that we love. So the first one is I choose... Uh, life I love. The second is I choose to be healthy and vital. The next is I choose to live my true nature and purpose. And lastly, I choose to be the creative force in my life. Okay. So we need to step into and live from these four choices first. Before, before you go and create all the, the things, you know, oh, Chris, I hear, you know, you've got millions of dollars and a great relationship and great life. Before you go into all of that, you must get into these four. Can someone type them in for me? Because uh, I'm not sure you can see them all so far. So the first one is, uh, I choose a life I love. I choose a life I love. I choose to live a life I love. By stepping into this orientation, you're just choosing a life you love. It's the first orientational choice. Instead of choosing to live a life that is trying to overcome everyone else's stuff right uh, choosing a life i love there's no negative in that it's just a life you love the next i choose to be healthy and vital i choose this every day i'm already healthy and vital and you are too i don't believe anyone is more than 95 percent uh more than five percent unhealthy you see even someone who's got a diagnosis They've got so many places that they are healthy that they can focus on. I choose to be healthy. So by choosing to be healthy, I'm not admitting I'm unhealthy because I'm freaking not. Look at me, I'm here, I'm alive. I'm, I'm choosing to be healthy. The next is I choose to live my true nature and purpose, okay? Uh, which is when you really step into your truth, what is true for you. And that is just doing what you love. And last is I choose to be the creative force of my life orientates you to being, well, I'm just going to create it as I like it. I choose to be the creative force in my life. Now, this is a new way of orientating. The old way was I'm going to have this so I can be safe. I'm going to have this so I can be. There's, there's no, uh, for these four, 
There's no reason to have these. They're just really good. They're just really good. There's no other reason to have these. Every person on this call, everyone listening, you want to have all of these four. True? You do. You do. You want to have all these four. You do want a life you love. You do want to be healthy. You do want to live your true nature and purpose. And you do want to be a creative force in your life. It's just true. It's, it's fine. These are, these, are our, these are the orientational choices. But nowhere in here is there a sniff of you trying to resolve a way you feel incomplete about yourself. See, you can have a life you love. It's just a life you love, however you love it. Does this make sense, guys? We need to stop making success and failure personal. Failure is not personal. Success is not personal. It was simply the structure that was created. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it. See, a lot of people would like to make more money. I'm telling you, it's completely structural. The structural for money is to first understand what money is. Money is a measurement. Okay. Second thing is to ask, what does it measure? It measures value given in a way that someone wants to pay for it. It's a measurement and it measures value in a way that someone wants to pay for it. Okay. So it's very simple. If you would like to receive a lot of it, you must give a lot of value in a way that people want to pay for it. So in order to do that, you need to have something that's highly desirable, that is valuable, they, that people enjoy, that's delivered without your time. And the more of that, the, do, the more you have. See? And we go, well, Chris, okay, well, what is value? Okay, value is where you increase satisfaction in someone else's life or decrease their pain. Okay? And so can everyone just see that's the structure of receiving lots of money? True? There's no point me writing a book on that. That's it. That's it. If you want to receive lots of it, know that it's a measurement. It's going to measure value in a way that people want to pay for it because you can give value that people don't want to pay for. Yeah, yeah, I know it's simple, but that's the structure of it. But you, you, you'd be told all these other things, you know, you don't have to be smart. You don't, you know, revolutionary. It's none of these things that we're told because it's simply not the structure. So that's, that's very, very, yeah, someone just typed in an exchange of energy. And um, unfortunately, that's one of these misguided principles. You see, it's misguided not wrong, misguided, meaning there is energy exchanged, but it, it doesn't need to be in our formula because it doesn't make our formula better. See, if I, if I have a book, if I have a book and someone keeps buying it, yes, I put energy into that book once, but I didn't have to keep putting energy in. So do you see how, yes, part of that statement is true? Yeah, it is an exchange of energy. But can you see how it misguides us thinking we must always put energy in? A lot of people, a lot of people get this idea wrong. They go, hey, Chris, money is energy. It's just not. Money is, it was, it simply was a way for us to measure value in something so that, you know, I can trade my cow for your chickens. That was it. It was just a measurement tool. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you for bringing that. It's not wrong. It just doesn't add to our clarity, okay? It just doesn't add to our clarity. Karen. I think it is very simple, uh, Karen. It, 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 it's so structural. Anything you want to create is structural, and it's up here on the page. It, these are the first four that orientate us to a new structure. What I love to do is writing songs. I'm very good at it. I don't know how to deliver a lot of, in a way that people value enough to pay for. 
Yeah, so the assumption is that you need to get paid in that way. Do you see how you have just collapsed it? You see? Just enjoy writing songs, man. There's millions of ways that you can be in a money structure. Well, I don't, all I can see is Dan. It might be Danielle. So sorry if I just said man. And it's, I just see Dan dot, dot, dot. So what's the structure of people who win, win the lot, lottery? I'd say lucky. I, th I think that a lot of times we, we don't want to just um, get into that, but it's a very simple structure. One's per, one person's name gets picked. The structure is, is called randomness. Yeah. True. And there's always ideas about how they might keep it or not keep it or blah, blah, blah. but there's it's just randomness. It's very, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of us don't want to accept randomness. True. True. It's, it, and that's fine. I mean, it's fine, but also it, it's a working premise. You know, I, I just think it's randomness. You know, uh, I mean, imagine we're in a unified field where everyone is tuning in to create. And if you have uh, if you have a thousand people that all do the exact same process, step into the end result of, of winning the lottery, there has to be, you know, that, that, that those waves have to cross over. And, and there's, you know, it's not like the person's hand gets guided by the strongest force. <laughs> True, just saying. Uh, I, I guess I love objective reality. And so I look at things. Um, oh, man, if it, you know, so the question, can you give me three examples of the millions of ways that I could make money and live a life I love? Bro, by if, if, if I answer the question is coming from a, uh, it's, it's coming from a place of, I mean, dude, dude, the, a cafe, a bookstore, uh, uh, um, sell motorcycles. I mean, dude, it's, there's so many ways. Uh, th th that's my point. It's, it's like, it's not even, it's not even worth me answering it. I love you. I love you, man. But, but the point is, is the structure of, I must make money from a thing that I love is not included in our model. Does that make sense? There's an infinite amount of ways to do it. You can lend money. You can start a gym, start a bar. I mean, it's just, it's beyond huge, you see? But the question is actually a really good question because the question is coming from a place of it's got to be about me, you see? But it's money structural, just like, but can you see that? What a beautiful, what a beautiful question, actually. What a beautiful question. Well, what, where do I fit in all of these? Because I love this. Can you see how it's been made personal there? Instead of going, well, okay, structure's simple. What is something that people value? How can it be delivered? How can I own that? Right? Nothing to do with you. You see, nothing to do with you. Oh, so good. It's so good. That's so clear. You see? I've got to get good at something. See, we were told this, go to university, go to college, get good grades, be good at stuff. You see, it's personal. Rather than going, no, it's structural. If you want lots of money, just own a structure that makes lots of money, got nothing to do with you. Ah, so good. Thanks, Dan. Mm. I love this stuff. It was such a big revelation to me. I spent so long thinking it was about fixing me, improving me, learning more. And if, and if I win, I'm the one that did it. It's not. The structure is what creates it. You see, you, there's people that are way less smart than you, way more lazy than you, and are hitting the results you want. It's just not personal. It's just not. It's just a structure that you put in, you know? Well, your assumption, so the question is, how do I live a life I love if I have to do a bunch of things I don't love to make a living? Well, your assumption is that you have to do those. See, your assumption is you've got to do things. And so just come back to the statement of 
that structure, and by the way, I'm completely off track where I want to be, but the structure is nowhere in that structure does it say you've got to do anything. It says money flows, money flows towards someone who gives value to others in a way they want to pay for it. So you don't have to do anything. You see? Look, guys, like I own, I own gyms, I own hair salons, I own a digital marketing agency, but I'm here with you. You see? We're in this weird reality where we've made everything personal. See, I'm no personal trainer. This is one of the structures, John, for sure. So guys, you've got to understand structure, hey? How's that, Dan? Structure. It, it once you once you <laughs> someone just said it still sounds like you have to have money to make money. Guys, we've got to get ourselves out of this view, these, these, these crazy views of, of, that aren't structural, that it's about what I have. Guys, someone just said to me, sounds like you still have to make money, uh, you have to have money to make money, okay? And it's just not true. It's not true. Why is it not true? If you, the structure that you're creating needs money, who says you got to be the one that has it? There's, there's lots of people with money. There's banks with money. There's, if that's what's needed for the structure you want to create, it's a very simple input to find. You see, why not find, you see, there's just, but the point is this, is that even though I introduce a very simple structure, do you see how so much of us comes up to make it about us, but I don't have it, but I'm not good enough, but I don't love that, but I, but I, but I, who just give me a yes, if you're noticing the, these beautiful questions and, and objections coming in that make it so obvious how we've all put ourselves in the creation. We've all put ourselves in the creation, but the creation, your kids, your relationship, your body, your life, your money, your whatever, it ain't you. You're over here. You've just got to understand structure. You've just got to understand structure. You see? So these are the four things that we want to work on to step into a new structure. We choose it. What we do when we make a, tr a choice, okay, is we step into the end result of having it, okay? Once we step into the end result of having it, we step into the current reality that we have now, okay? Once you do this, you go end result, current reality, there are two ways you get the next step, okay? So this creates the tension. We go into end result, we go into current reality, and this creates the tension structure. This is like creating the hunger. Does this make sense, guys? This creates the hunger. We go into the end result, we come back to now. That creates the void, that creates the hunger. This tension will want to be resolved. Does this make sense? This tension will want to be resolved towards that new creation. Make sense? In order to resolve it, you are going to get ideas pushed up into your awareness that will tell you about what the next step is to get there. This is how we create lenses, okay? End result, current reality, bridge. And bridge means what takes you from there to there, what moves you. Now, what happens a lot of times is as we get the bridge, the bridge says, quit your job, start a business, do this. That's where resistance comes in and says, you can't possibly do that, right? And how many of you have noticed, a few that are interacting with me, resistance is popping up. I've already started to create the structure in their mind. They're seeing their next step might be to start or do something that they don't know about. <gasps> And then up pops resistance. And what do one of those, what do those resistances look like? Well, they simply look like some of these. Well, I'm not enough. I'm not capable. I, I can't do it. 
I'm not worthy of that. So it pops up. And that's when we use, that's when we use the recode to ensure that we're always flowing in the right direction. Does that make sense? So we're always flowing. 